On the breakfast this morning, the House of Representatives at a committee set to investigate oil subsidy payments between 2013 and 2022. How viable is this and what are the implications for the Nigerian economy? Also on the breakfast, the Nigerian Deficit Insurance Corporation has advised Nigerians to beware of Ponzi scheme operating under the guise of financial institutions. And of course, we have a daily look at today's newspapers, at the daily newspapers and headlines, analyzing the biggest stories of the day on Off the Press. A very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, reaching live from the studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Mercy Bokos. Beautiful Thursday morning right here. Thank you for joining us. That's right, Mercy. You're back from your leave. Um, of course, I uh, saw you all over Dubai, Abu Dhabi, <laughs> taking pictures everywhere. Uh, uh, what did you bring for us? Don't even go us? there. What did you bring <laughs> for us? Don't even go there. All right. Great. It's all good right. to be back here. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Um, today, the breakfast has interesting uh, conversations for you. We're going to be looking at the, all the issues advertised uh, with in-depth analysis. But as usual, we start with a top trending segment, um, looking at what's been happening in the social space. The, the recent activities and floor activities around Governor Yenson week of River State, you know, it's generated, generated a lot of reaction and uh, uh, discussion. I mean, from the beer parlors to social media <laughs> to the churches to the radio stations to television stations, you know, people's homes, everybody's talking about it. Um, week has been on a commissioning um, spree of recent, recent days, commissioning flyover bridges, commissioning dualized roads. I mean, for those in Port Harcourt, um, at least they, now they can use water lines. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to go through, you know, they can use water lines. And so that's, that's a, a relief that uh, traffic in Port Hackett uh, will be slightly normalized. Um, the rift between Iwike and the Tiku has been well publicized after uh, the former lost the PDP presidential primary to the latter. Uh, however, he refused to take it lying down immediately landed Port Hackett uh, to a hero's welcome. He made a statement, a speech, you know, berating certain governors from the southern part of the country who reneged on, or he said reneged on an agreement to ensure that uh, power returns to the south. And he came in second, of course, I'm sure he, you know, BK believed that he had the best chance to, to win. So he said they promised him, you know, the likes of Okoa, the likes of uh, all these governors, like Babi and everyone, you know, all the, the PDP stakeholders, sorry, not like Babi, is in the APC, from the southern part of the country uh, promised that, okay, we have an agreement. It was well publicized that they will then do everything to ensure that power returns to the south. Um, however, you know, Wike, Wike was angry and everything. But the, the, the one that really, uh, the straw <laughs> that broke the camel's back was when uh, Atiku chose his running mate. You know, there were talks that the PDP had formed a, a committee to look into how to, you know, resolve the issue and also to help Atiku more, very importantly, most importantly, uh, select a running mate, select a running mate. There was a report of some, you know, uh, voting, uh, which turned out about 14 of them voted in support of Wike uh, to be, or less a majority, because I don't quite remember the numbers right now, voted in support of Yesu Wike to be the running mate of Atiku. Uh, as opposed to Okoa and as opposed to Imano Ludom. Um, however, Atiku chose um, Okoa and uh, Wiki went to speak some more. Um, Wiki wasn't happy about Atiku's statement. I swear, if you remember, uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar Lahaji, Atiku Abubakar uh, Turakia Damawa, he said some things uh, as to why he chose Okoa uh, as his running mate. And he gave the, the qualities of a running mate. He says it must be. Uh, you know, forward thinking, he must be, um, uh, he gives, and he said he must be without drama. <laughs> <laughs> and you could see the look at Atiku's face when he said he must be without drama, you know. So most of the things he said seemed like he was uh, spiting Yenson Wike. That's what it seemed like. He was, he was saying, say, you don't have these things, you know, visionary, you know, can bring something to the table, must have the ability to be a president in waiting. Uh, he must be someone without drama. And um, Wiki wasn't happy. And in an interview with a television station last week, he poured his heart out. He spoke his mind and called 
all the things Atiku said to was a liar. He lied about everything. And so the rift has been on, and he said he wasn't happy about the statements Atiku made uh, when he was unveiling his running mate. Well, you know, mm. so 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 the, the expectation was that Atiku would be carried along. Um, but Atiku said something. He said that he never asked any committee to sit down and get him choose a running mate for him. It was merely a suggestion that they brought to him. He always looked at it as his choice to choose he who he wanted to work with. Now, following on from that, there have been talks of, uh, uh, or attempts, let me say, to mend the fence between these two men. Uh, the PDP Board of Trustees had met, they formed one committee, they met again from another committee. Before that committee could do its work, Atiku and Wike met in Jerry Gana's house in Abuja, and everyone expected that, you know, all was well. Only for Wike to, days later, invite some old governor of Lagos State to come commission a flyover in Port Hackett in a company of... Um, uh, uh, David Umahi, governor of Ibuwe State. Now, these are APC governors. Uh, apart from that, there was a Twitter, a tweet by an, a handle, suspended to be Wiki's handle, where he put a picture of himself and a picture of uh, 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 Saolu, and he put the hashtag, uh, the word city boys. You know, so, so the, the rift has been on between uh, the two uh, for some time now, and this has generated lots of uh, talk on social media. That was just a history uh, down memory lane. Merci. Yeah, but, but you, you have um, some persons who have said that, uh, for instance, one of the lawmaker, Bob, in River State, who said that the reason for this rift is because of the disinformation that's been put out by Atiku's men, and that was intended to discredit and make nonsense of a person of um, Wiki, yes, I'm Wiki. And we already know, according to the report, it can be stated that all of this started shortly after the primaries, so you won't talk about uh, the fact that... Um, Party politics, I mean, conflict would always arise. Internal um, conflicts would always be there. But how is the capacity to resolve all of this? So um, Bob at that time said that disinformation is responsible for what's going on and uh, it shouldn't have been what it is right now because uh, he said there were reports by Atiku men saying that Wiki was not satisfied with the outcome of the primaries. That's on the one hand. And secondly, uh, that he named the running mate of, he was expected that he should be named a running mate of uh, the presidential candidate. And so you have, uh, you know, this lawmaker saying that all of this were not really true. It wasn't really his intention. But, you know, all of this works. Now, to some extent, you also want to agree that, um, or you want to look at the fact that uh, Wiki also, after the primary, has never reached out to say congratulations to the running mate, uh, Ifan Yokoa, uh, saying, okay, congratulations, and all of that. So uh, some people have also looked at that as an issue. And the fact that his acceptance, he's saying that uh, for them to have, the efforts have been made to have a peace talk, but for all of that to become a reality, then you must have the national chairman uh, resigning and reshuffling of the cabinet. And that has also been, you know, uh, one of the reasons that is given. So we, we see all of this. But it's quite unfortunate. Some people would say because you expect that the People's Democratic Party should be an opposition ahead of the 2023. I'm talking about opposition, not just ahead, but should leave as an opposition. And one should not expect all of this conflict at this point in time. You know, it should be a party that should have our acts together. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And so uh, from the fact that you have lack of transparency, uh, the party level has also crippled the entire process. So this is what happens. Democracy at the party level. When you don't have transparency, all of that becomes an issue. And so you have confrontations and what have you. Uh, egos have been crushed or you move to the issue of uh, those who have the money, money muscle, pulling in the party, financing the party, and also all of that contributes. It, it's really, really unfortunate. But um, if, if you follow the trends and if you look what's going on, uh, oh. it feels like a lot of persons are moving beyond the APC and the PDP and people are saying, hey, we do not even care about what's going on with this party to some persons. Uh, but it, it would have been expected that the PDP should have their act together before 2023 elections. Yeah, so some have also, I mean, you know, you rightly said, Mercy, that the, uh, uh, you know, this, this talk of misinformation by... Um, Mr. Bob, I don't understand what he means by misinformation or disinformation. I mean, Wiki openly made his speeches. He, he expressed his unhappiness at um, the outcome of the primary. He gave a speech, so I do not know what disinformation Bob is talking about. Uh, Wiki gave a, an interview to television stations when he came back uh, from Spain. Now, I don't know what this is, that disinformation. We, we saw him in, in live in color. 
on TV. It's all over the internet. So what disinformation uh, is Solomon Bob talking about? Um, of course, when Wiki has uh, uh, given his, his statewide broadcast um, regarding political meetings in River State, suspected to be targeted at uh, members of the, the PDP who are working for Atiku in River State, um, I mean, is that disinformation? When, when Wiki, uh, you know, uh, put out uh, uh, an arrest warrant or <laughs> declared one um, House of Reps member wanted, talking about uh, uh, Dr. Farad Agogo, you know, and he was suddenly arrested and prevented from taking part in the PDP primaries in River State. Um, he's, you know, perceived to be an Atiku man, you know, and in the PDP in River State. Um, was that disinformation? You know, what about the requests request or demands that uh, uh, Iocha, you the, the chairman, like you said, of the PDP, stepped out? You know, that Atiku does a one term. You know, some of these requests we hear. Um, Wiki is not happy with the way things have been done in the party. He said it, and he said it many times. You know, mm -hmm. he said it many times. And even he's, I think, part of his pain is um, the way he's been treated. Uh, he feels that um, an agreement like. Uh, 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 what's this? Uh, no, what actor draw song again? Um, uh, he said, "Agreement is agreement." <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> the well, name of it is no really actor. <laughs> and Kemo was saying, "Agreement is agreement." Here, you know. I don't so, remember so, that. so we agreed. We agreed that we are going to shift power and the party to the south. What have you done? You know, Atiku made the step of going to see Wiki the morning after the election, the primary. He went to see some of the persons and he went to see Wiki. You know, and uh, one thought that would, and we said it, it's, it's one party. One thought that would uh, continue from there. But hey, this is where they are. But some people feel that we uh, having invested a lot in PDP, because of course, after Jonathan uh, left the scene, um, there was no one to steady the ship. And we stepped in and steadied the ship in the PDP. Some feel Atiku left the PDP, went to APC, he was part of those who were instrumental in bringing the APC to power, and he came back. He doesn't deserve to be where he is. But you see, it's politics. You don't. You don't have a sense of entitlement in politics. You can move to any party you want at any time you want. And Atiku is a presidential candidate. So I don't think there's anything about who moved or who didn't move. We're looking at now. And that's what matters. I hope the party can pull together uh, mm. and then get its acts right. Yeah. Well, it, it might just be almost impossible, but we need to move away from that. Some of these issues we've mentioned where you have uh, some powerful persons at the party level. Uh, you talk about the money muscle pulling it, it becomes a problem. All of these are issues. But it would be a discussion for another day. Still looking at the top trending this morning, Keith Daniel apologizes to his fans in Tanzania and uh, promises, you know, to perform a free show. And I'm sure that you're very abreast, you know, with the current situation. I mean, Keith Daniel, he's the uh, heat maker of the Buga, you know, that very hit song. And some, some persons have described that song like... Uh, the baby shark, the adult version of baby shark. I don't know if you know what that means. <laughs> don't worry, you would understand very soon. And so, uh, <laughs> Kiss Daniel was supposed to. <laughs> you, 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 you seem to already understand it. No, I do understand. You do, okay. <laughs> Is there something you're not telling us? I will tell you after. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. But oh, I think that. You know, you're saying I understand level, soon. So maybe you already understand. <laughs> you will understand. <laughs> but moving forward, uh, we already understand what actually transpired between Kiss Daniel. Uh, and his performance in Tanzania. It didn't really turn out well. Unfortunately, he didn't show up. Let's come out to talk about the reason why uh, he was unable to show up for that performance. And this is prior to uh, the response. After, you know, uh, the show promoter had an interview on air with some personalities in Nigeria talking about all of that. And he uh, made reason saying that, hey, he refused to perform because his... Uh, outfits or accessories were not available and that's the reason why he refused to perform after being paid sixty thousand dollars as it was uh, reported but kiss daniel has said that he had issues with flight connecting flight to nairobi and getting to tanzania and then his luggage had not arrived because he was in uganda prior to this time and unfortunately he couldn't really at the end of the day it means like his accessories were not available or his costume whatever however you want to look at it and at the time he was willing to you know go out when it was time the fans were already agitated and they had already taken action uh you know becoming very violent and according to him he said that his management had advised that you know he stay, he, he stays put i mean he stays down uh for security purposes and all of that and that was the reason why but uh, he's apologizing his intentions was not to take his fans for granted 
and, and as such, he will be putting up a free show. The question would now be, is it really a free show because uh, were they refunded? <laughs> All right, is it a free show? And what will the impact be? Well, it's a good thing. I mean, a lot's been said about Kiss Daniel. There's a lot of buzz on the internet. But that's it. But, but, but what do you make of the situation? Yeah, Kofi? yeah. It, it's, um, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, of course, uh, such news will, will sell the money to spread his name far and far. Because, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about him. So, <laughs> this what, you know, sometimes these guys do these things. You don't know if it's planned. You know, to get some, like what they call clout these days. You don't know if it's planned uh, to get clout so they can they can trend, people can talk about because it's been trending. You know, I remember when um, uh, my good friend Potakot Boy Omale was arrested in Uganda, you know, for one, one thing or the other. He, went, he was taken to court and he was trending around Africa. Um, some people say, hey, maybe he's just trying to sell himself and to trend. But uh, well, we don't know. We will never know. The fact is that we saw Case Daniel uh, being arrested in or being picked up by police, let's call it that, in Tanzania. Uh, I think it should have been Dar es Salaam from his hotel. Uh, he had to you know, sit at the back of a pickup truck and he went to the police station to, to answer some questions. But what, what we know now is that he wasn't arrested, but he was invited you know, to answer questions. You know, um, uh, interestingly, what I had said before now was that um, we will wait to hear the side of Case Daniel. Uh, he... The show promoter was on Daddy Freeze's Instagram Live, where he gave reasons why uh, Kiss Daniel was quote unquote arrested. Um, and he said the guy he refused to perform simply because his baggage had not arrived at the time he, Kiss Daniel, arrived in Tanzania. And uh, he said his gold chains were in his baggage and luggage. And he needed that luggage to arrive and so he can use his gold chain to perform. You know, so people started saying, okay, now Juju, or no be Juju be that. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why does he want to use his gold chain? You know, that is to say in, in, in Pigeon English, for those who are listening outside Nigeria, is that not Juju or Voodoo? You know, <laughs> so why would he want to use his gold chain to perform? And, you know, he got tongues wagging. Maybe he's put his hands in something. Uh, that is where he gets his power from. You know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah. I really didn't get that part of the story. Oh, you should go watch what I'm saying. <laughs> I've been entertaining myself with it for the past few days. I mean, it's a lot going on in the country. You know, so, um, but, but one of his, his um, associates, someone who is close to him, came out to say, oh, it's uh, stage fright. It was stage fright. That's why he couldn't go on, 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 on the stage or go perform. But I think that comment didn't help his Daniel at all. Because, I mean, people here, you have stage fright as an artist with such a... Um, uh, amount of hits is it uh, a good thing or not but um f finally of course yesterday daniel uh, uh or anidube as his name is 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 called uh, did did a press conference intelligent man spoke well you know well educated spoke well comes from a good family mm. spoke well and uh, he said that to oh, give all reasons but you know it, to some people who were who watched and commented on that it seemed like he was just going around you know and just uh, you know just trying to say something so that, uh, and they didn't think it was an apology. Some people felt it was uh, a display of pride. You know, some people who commented felt it was a display of pride. You know, he was bugaying as he was apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so, so, but he said what he said. That um, he, his luggage got stuck. I mean, the story was up, down, you, you left, know, right. Um, if up, you look down. at it, yeah. He said his luggage got stuck in, you know, he had a delayed flight from Uganda. He had to go to Nairobi. From Nairobi, he was left there. He got to Dar es Salaam at around 1 a.m. The flight uh, performance was for 3 a.m. He had to look for a stylist. He found no, no, a no, stylist. No, no, first he, he, he was supposed to have like a practice, no. right? Yeah, yeah so, do sound and check. sound check and all of that. Know, guys Unfortunately, he couldn't even. He couldn't, because there was, the crowd was already there. So his people really couldn't do much sound check. But if you collect money mm. for a program, for an event like that, and the crowd is there already, as a, an experienced act, you know, is this sound check that will stop you from performing? Come on. Pata, pata, you can do track one, track two. DJ, <laughs> play track one. You, you do, no, you no. know, you lip sync. But, but if you also want you to look sync. at it, another they, they part... They lip sync all the time. How many of the... When, when did they start... When did Nigerian artists start doing sound check? I mean, Kiss Daniel, no offense to your professionalism. This is where they should be at. But they all started by doing track one, track two. I've seen this guy perform, you know. No, but, but you also, but play, we also need DJ to look play at song. He has done it many times. So what is he talking about? I don't think it's sound check. But what he said was that all these things were, sorry, Mercy, were a reason. It's just saying it to show that um, he actually wanted to perform. You know, he now said, oh, that uh, after, you know, he was drenched and he now looked for something to wear. And that 
at the final minute, you know, he said there was a disagreement with the organizers, but later they sorted it out. So why are you telling us? That was not why he didn't perform. I said at the final minute that uh, they said his team decided that the place was not safe enough for him to go to and all that. And what we hear is that the police, you know, there was some destruction of property. There was a riot of some sort, you know, because he said the police invited him to uh, ask him what he knows about the destruction of property at the arena, you know. So it seems that the fans weren't happy and they started breaking things. So maybe, maybe at that point for him it was too late to... It was not safe, safe to go. That's what I think you should have said. Well, uh, another thing that was also raised or concerned that should be looked at is the fact that if you have a performance, because prior to this time, he was in Uganda on the 6th and he's supposed to perform mm -hmm. on the 7th. And so why do you have to travel on the date of a performance? So, uh, but he mentioned something that was very apt. And he said, oh, because I was in Tanzania, he would have just been great. I mean, I was in Uganda. It was just great for the people of Tanzania, you know, to also feel my presence and enjoy it. So mm. I think it was just like a last minute arrangement, you know, because you're um, close by, then you should go. It, it, and because it, it would it have was, been it important. Wasn't, it wasn't a last minute arrangement because it's been on his Instagram for some time. But, but yeah. one would rather think that, you know, there should be proper arrangement because yeah. imagine that he had arrived, um, mm. you know, Tanzania a day before all of this or three days to the event. Uh, all of this wouldn't have happened. I'm sure mm. that it would have time, you know, have time to sort out issue of accessories and what have you. Mm. And but, it's but, but it's been on his Instagram, this Tanzania thing, since uh, 19th July. So 18th July, it's been there, you know, since 18th July. But, but however you look at it, would, mm. it, would it be okay that you have, I mean, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. so you, you performed in Uganda on the 6th of August and then you have a performance on the 7th, apparently. So you have to leave for Tanzania on the 7th of August. It doesn't leave you time to arrange. The plan, you know, the, the most important thing or the better thing to do is to get ahead of the venue you know, maybe a day, two days ahead of the event. Mm -hmm. It gives you a lot of time. So even if you have issues with your luggage, it mm -hmm. would have been important that mm -hmm. you would make prior arrangements. I mean, another day would be enough for you to get someone to style you and yeah. get all of your accessories, yeah. if that is the case. But yeah. we're just hoping that it, it can only get better with uh, him and all of that. Yeah, apologized. another aspect of this uh, conversation is the uh, fact that, you know, he's been, it's not the first time it's happening to him. Uh, Babcock University was trending on the day his was, uh, was picked up by the Tanzania police. And I was wondering why Babcock was trending. And some people said, oh, remember when uh, you know, he, he failed to perform somewhere um, and there was an issue. You know, people have raised the concern that it's not the first time it's happening to Kiss Daniel, that this has happened before. Um, so I'm also linking it to maybe the problems he had with his label and everything, to say that maybe his, his, his attitude, his style, he needs to change. You know, though, though it's, it's hard to judge people from afar, you know. It's hard to judge people from afar. I wouldn't want to judge Kiss Daniel from afar. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't want to okay. judge it from afar. You know, but this, this is what people said. We just have to tell the audience what people are saying. You know, it's, uh, well, coffee, we need but, to but this free concert, you know, it remains to be seen. It's tomorrow, right? It remains to be seen whether the Tanzanians will, will accept it as apology, you know. Uh, I, like I mentioned earlier on, if you say it's free, uh, was there a refund? Because, I mean, people have to pay for this. People actually mm -hmm. paid for this. Mm -hmm. There was no performance. That's so, the original show. Yeah, original mm -hmm. show. So yeah. if you say it's a free concert, are we having, uh, you know, persons who didn't buy the ticket prior to this time? So you're going to have, if you're supposed to perform for 3,000 persons, uh, maybe we're looking at, you know, performing for 5,000 persons or mm -hmm. more than. But is it really a free show? That, that's, that's so much that's, we can take now, Kofi. <laughs> <laughs> that's so much we can take at this show. point because we're out of time. We take a break when we return, it will be time for us to look at the front pages of a national daily. Please stay with us.